Hello guys, how are you? Today we are talking about turbochargers. How does the turbocharger work? In this video we are going to talk about the principles of working of a turbocharger. Now on this Alpha 155 of mine, this is a turbo diesel, 1.9 or 2 liter turbo diesel engine. And uh, I have here this, uh, this gauge to see the pressure of the, the turbo. This uh, gauge is not original, as you may know, uh, but it's really uh, useful uh, so you can control the pressure of your turbo. Uh, why do you want to control the pressure of your turbo? Uh, you, have, you may have to control it because of the, some problem with the turbo itself, some problem with the intercooler or some piping, and uh, the main reason is uh, fuel consumption. Uh, the more you have, the less pressure you have on your turbo, uh, the less fuel consumption you have on these turbo diesel engines, because you have a function on the fuel pump that delivers more fuel when you are engaging the turbo, just like, like so, okay? More diesel and more, more power as well. How does the turbo work? Um, I don't, I will not talk about that very specifically because there is a lot of information out there for how the, the fundamental, fundamentals of working of a turbo, but I want to uh, invite you about um, how to percept the working of a turbo charger on a car. So you can understand the, the correct workings of a turbo uh, with and without geometry, variable geometry. This turbo here is a fixed, uh, it, it's just a wastegate uh, uh, geometry tr turbo, uh, if, I, if I can call it geometry. And this turbo here is uh, more dedicated between 2000 and 4000 RPM. Uh, below 2000 RPM, I, will, I don't have a lot of turbo, I don't have uh, any um, pressure of turbo, as I, as I, as I can des demonstrate to you here. I am in fourth gear, my pedal is on the floor, the gas pedal, or the diesel pedal, and no power, no power, no power, and now it starts to wake up, okay, power, yes, here we go, my foot is still on the floor, and my pressure is always at 1.2, 1.3, it depends on the gear, okay? Okay, now, how do you know if the turbo is working correctly? You want to have the pressure as soon as possible. For that, you have to uh, know the, the kind of car you are work, or working on. Later on the video, we are working on my multi-jet engine, and you will see that the pressure is a bit different the, uh, in relation to the RPM. It comes really sooner, okay? But this uh, older style of tur turbos, this turbo has 25 years, almost 30 years, uh, and the turbos uh, had a lot of lag. You surely heard about that. So, when you get rid of the lag, around 2000 RPM, the pressure must increase with a lot of, like this, just like this, okay? It has to be consistent. And when I let, let off my accelerator, accelerator pedal, the pressure must return or at least maintain. If you are um, leaving your about 50% of the, the pedal, just do a turn here, like so. So I'm going to do half, 50% of pedal. When I reach my, I, I want to reach about 2500 RPM, and the pressure stabilizes or drops even. That is normal. In this video, we are not we are not talking about yet uh, talking about uh, faults on the turbo because first I want you to understand the principles of uh, the correct workings of a turbocharger. Okay, let's do some more experiments. I am in fourth. Let's do full pedal, one hundred percent. One bar, one one, one point two. Okay, one more thing. I think I think for now we are uh, enlightened by these uh, workings. Okay, if you have any problems with the hoses or the intercooler, 
the pressure will not rise or it can rise to about it depends on the rip okay but we have if you have a one a two centimeter rip you can have about 500 grams or half a kilogram or half a bar about right there and the car does not accelerate and um, it can produce a lot of smoke by the from the exhaust you have a problem with lack of uh, buildup of pressure now I am going to stop here to show you something I have the car the car on idle okay some rocks on the ground the car is on idle and I will accelerate and watch the pressure of the turbo not a lot of pressure half a kilogram so the car, the, the turbo diesel and the gasoline engines as well, but the diesel is more, uh, you, can, you can actually percept it more. You need charge on the car to have pressure. It's the exhaust gases, the heavy exhaust gases that produce the thrust on the turbines. And then on the compressor, it produces more pressure on the intake okay love now on a modern car this pressure here is constantly being monitored next on the video uh, let's see on my alpha 156 on the multi-jet engine and we'll see the pressure the real pressure that is occurring and the pressure that should be occurring at any time okay yes so now we are on alpha 156 uh, we are I already plugged in my my diagnosis computer uh, for this uh, this job you really need a good quality diagnosis computer if you, even if you have those little things that uh, usually don't work because why don't they work they can enter your unit okay but they may may give you false readings of the, the faults or just give you the faults um, or the faults uh, okay lots of things uh, involving the, the, the fault codes but remember the fault codes are almost nothing compared to parameters you really have to um, have the, a machine that can read the parameters that are happening in real life on your car so what do you do, need now is a good quality machine a diagnosis machine I have an old hotel uh, it's a wonderful machine it's a little bit out of date but okay it's what I can manage um, and I have here I will show you next the pressure of the turbo that that is supposed to be okay that the unit is commanding at all times and is uh, seeing what the, the, the pressure really is and what it should be it's comparing at all times the, those two pressures okay the, the pressure that it should be the pressure that is happening now the pressure that is happening where is it measured on your intake manifold that black sensor uh, is the, the measuring sensor don't change yet the sensor please don't change it okay it, it is only the messenger if you have problems with turbo with pressure of turbo do not change uh, every single part the intake pressure sensor is the the last resort okay the, the, it's the last thing to, to fail uh, as I told you on the other video about uh, about uh, uh, regaining power um, on your car the first problem is always the vacuum tubes okay uh, they are always cracked or torn or something and then you have the, that uh, regulator for the the geometry of the turbo uh, and the sensor you just clean the, the orifice and it's okay I never have okay I work on cars on uh, for, from about mm, big math here 2007 13 years 14 years 14 years professionally okay and I never ever never have to change a sensor on the intake of a multi -gen. never okay uh, normally the problem is always elsewhere okay another thing about the, the pressure on this video like I said I don't want to talk about faults uh, for now okay this video is just all about how does it work in perfect conditions so you you 
we, we can have a baseline uh, about how to approach a problem. Um, this baseline here, this car is working perfectly. On future videos, I will actually provoke some faults, so we can um, some common faults, okay? So we can diagnose ourselves uh, or me with you, okay? <laughs> um, diagnose the problems. Uh, in the you will see some most of the times uh, you will spend zero on fixing turbo problems, uh, okay? I'm hoping I'm being help, uh, helpful with these videos. Uh, before we get to the diagnosis machine, um, please hit the like button, share with your, with your friends, and sub consider subscribing. It is very important uh, for me, for my um, for my mind state. Okay, to to be able to continue with this. This is very time consuming, as you may understand. Okay, uh, working on cars is not easy on the time. It's not easy on the wallet. But that's, that's another problem, it is my problem, okay? But uh, recording this uh, takes some time, takes, takes all of my, my weekends, and now, okay, this is my, my problem again, but I have my little baby and I have even less less time. So, if, if you can make my, my channel grow simply by subscribing and hitting the like button, uh, it will give me more my, more uh, confidence, more trust to go farther, okay? So let's go now to the diagnosis machine. The pressure objective and the pressure that is being measured. That This is the objective and this is what it, it is really happening. This is measured by the sensor and this is the map, okay? So I will start, start to drive in the normal manner. So, on slow driving, the system will account for turbo lag and uh, only with, when you surpass the 2000 RPM mark, it really starts to be more focused on the pressure. I mean, in fourth gear, 2000 RPM and 100% uh, of throttle, the pressure must be as high as possible with the command the objective and uh, it may surround the 200 millibar of uh, of pressure or 100% for here 4000 rpm and now 6 gear as you may see the pressure is excellent good pressure in fact, and uh, the pressure that, that is being measured is equal to the to the objective. Let's do it, do it again. Now, in fifth gear, and uh, 1,500 RPM. So, turbo lag here, lag, lag. Now some power, power. Here the geometry starts to kick in, around 3000. Okay, now the geom geometry, what it does is actually at 3000 RPM or surrounding 3000 RPM, it is to take out pressure. Not, not really, really take out the pressure, but the, the exhaust gases are so powerful. Uh, above 3000 rpm or above two, two and a half thousand and a half thousand rpm that it don't need so much gases through the exhaust um, the geometry uses the, this, those uh, slow moving flow gases um, at uh, from idle up okay and then when, when the, it does not need them it switches around the geometry to continue the pressure of 2,100, uh, 2,000, oh, let's see, 2,200, sometimes 300, with overboost, okay, 2,200. Now, why if we are reading 2,200 instead of 1,000 in 100? It is because it considers the atmospheric pressure pressure the atmospheric pressure it is very important 
for the turbo measurements. I go page down to see the atmospheric pressure in Portuguese, okay? And at sea level, we are at 1000 millibar. If you go to a, a mountain, for example, or uh, to a tunnel or whatever, mm -hmm. and that pressure, uh, it's um, here, okay? Uh, that pressure is different. It will, it will compensate the objective pressure. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but the, these cars, these multi-jet cars on the mountains, they sound like they, they gain a horsepower. At least they sound like they are pumping the, the turbo a lot more. And it, that is actually, actually true. This, um, this mapping of, from factory for these cars is excellent uh, for, for this. Uh, I really noticed an, almost like an increase of power, at least an increase of um, response of the engine on the mountains. Because if you have a compensating turbo for, for high altitudes, that is actually why it was built for air, airplanes, uh, you will able to have uh, a better management of your engine. Another thing, if you have problems, again, with your turbo, please check always, firstly, this number here. It has to be uh, equal to the pressure that you have, okay, on the environment. Uh, if you have a, a, a very uh, flawed value, um, the turbo will never, never, never working properly, because this is the baseline for the turbo. This is the baseline for the unit. And this sensor here is actually inside the control unit, the ECU. It is inside there.